Hi everyone. So today I want to talk to you about the three different types of user interface paradigms that you can use with Profound.js applications. And we're going to start out with stateful rich displays. Actually, that's one of my favorites uh, because it's the easiest one to get started with. You're basically using a visual designer to build your applications. And so there's very little manual client-side coding that you have to do. Uh, this is very common for internal business applications that you run on the intranet. Um, statefulness is built right into it, meaning that you don't have to worry about session handling. That's already taken care of for you. And this is great for transactional applications, meaning if the user is following more of a predefined path as they go from screen to screen, then this is perfect. Now this next one, also stateful, but uses raw HTML and CSS. So this is great if you've got some existing HTML content that you want to reuse, or perhaps you just want to outsource the development of the screens to a web designer or a web design company. They can make things look really professional and you can just reuse that HTML content. And also if you're looking to do, uh, use, use frameworks like CSS frameworks like Bootstrap with all the responsive design capabilities that it provides, this is a great option. Now this last one is perhaps um, a little bit more work than the other two because you are managing the statelessness on your own. You are doing a lot of the more of the client side coding on your own. Uh, but it has its own advantages. It, it is the, probably ultimately the most flexible. It supports SEO and really supports any, any type of technology that you can find out there. So if you're familiar with Angular, React, jQuery, or if you want to build web services, this is the approach that, uh, that you would take. So I would consider this more flexible, but again, more advanced in terms of complexity, but you can probably find a lot of developers with a background in web applications that are quite familiar with this paradigm. So now that we looked at what the three different approaches are, let's take a look at each one of them with an example. So we'll start out with the rich displays and let's go and look at how you would start development with a rich display. So you'd start with this visual designer and you'd basically be dragging these widgets on the left hand side onto the canvas to design your screens. So, and setting properties over here as well. I've already created this little hello world screen. It's got a hello world title and I also wanted to include a little bit of a dynamic data so that we're not just dealing with static content. So this is the screen, whenever you design one, you're gonna save that into a JSON file, the information stored in JSON format. And that just goes into your modules uh, directory. After that, you're ready to write your server-side JavaScript code, and here's what I've written for this. So first line of code is to define the display, so basically pointing to that JSON file that we created. Then we populate any dynamic data, so in my particular example, I'm just populating the value of pi and we can go ahead and display the screen. So the output is going to look something like this. So that's what the output looks like. One thing to realize here is uh, let's think about where in the process the application is. Because this is a stateful application it is waiting for the user to respond and whenever the user does respond to the screen it will continue directly after this line. This is the nature of stateful applications. And this is great if uh, your process or your application is truly transactional. So a lot of internal applications are like this and this is a perfect fit for it. Now this next example is also stateful, but it uses HTML. And what you'll notice that is that my HTML file actually is not a full HTML file. I've only got the, the body content in here. You'll also notice that my HTML content can have dynamic data, and we're using a feature called EJS for this, or Embedded JavaScript. Profound.js supports EJS inherently. You can just start embedding dynamic information in here. So this dynamic message is going to be passed over from the server-side JavaScript code. Now let's look at, let's look at the server-side JavaScript code, and what you'll notice is that one of the first, first thing we do is we define the dynamic message. It's important to note that anything that is explicitly defined is automatically passed to the HTML content. So because we've defined this explicitly right, right here, the HTML content can pick this up. So we've defined the dynamic message, we've set the dynamic message, and then we display the screen. Now the last example that we're gonna look at is um, 
a little bit more involved in terms of the things that are going on. So first of all, you'll see that we had to build a full-blown HTML page. So you are more in control. You have to write basically all the code. And I try to keep this as simple as possible and just use a simple jQuery example. So jQuery is one of the simple uh, libraries that you can use. And the way that it works is in the body, we've got the hello world. And we also have an empty span tag that has an ID of dynamic message. So when the page loads, jQuery is making an Ajax request to this URL called API get pi. And when the results come back, the empty span actually gets populated with the dynamic message that comes from the server. So the server side code looks like this. We are building the result. And one thing to note is that we are calling out to the server to get server side information. Of course, in this particular simple example, pi can also be calculated by client side code. But this whole exchange of data between the server and the client is very important because you may have the need to go and fetch database information, for example, or do some backend, complex backend calculations. And this shows you how to do that. So the backend is then sending the result to the HTML page. And as we saw, that's going to be passed into the success function and then rendered into that span. Now, one thing that I want to point out is that we had to map this URL, this API get pi URL, to the script hello3.js. And you do that in your start.js file. Your start.js file is actually your configuration for the server. And Profound.js uses Express for the server. And the file that you get, the start.js, the ship file, looks exactly like what you're seeing on my screen, except for this one line that I've added in here. So this is where you add your custom lines for configuring the server. And I'm basically configuring this API get pi uh, URL and saying that maps to my hello3 uh, JavaScript code. The end result is going to look like this. As you can see, it's the same output, but now we're running in a stateless environment. So I hope you enjoyed this little demonstration. You've learned there are several different approaches to running a user interface within Profound.js. Which one to use is really going to depend on the type of application that you're trying to build. In some cases, it may even make sense to combine the different approaches.